success is not a proof of the will of God. Success is not a proof of the will of God. Fulfillment is the proof of the will of God. You didn't hear that. Success is not a proof of the will of God. Fulfillment is a proof of the will of God. That is why you see some people, you know, a man will marry a woman, buy her a jet, build her a house by the seaside, all right? And then give her a yacht so that she can even go through the waters and travel around the world. She can fly her private jet, give her beautiful cars, put everything in it for her, and the woman still commits suicide there in that house. What killed her? She has a jet. She has a yacht. She's living in a mansion. She's got housemaids and house helps. She has money to spend at any time. Why will she kill herself? Because she's not fulfilled. So success is not fulfillment. That you're successful doesn't mean you're fulfilled. That's why the rich keep looking for her to get richer by all means. Because they think by making more money they'll be fulfilled. But there's no fulfillment in money. There's no fulfillment in wealth. There's no fulfillment in riches. Get all the money. The more money you get, the more sorrowful you are. The more money you get, the more tormented you are. Solomon thought he could marry a thousand women and satisfy his lustful desires. And he married 300 wives, gathered 700 concubines. I mean a man amongst women. Women from different countries, different shapes, different sizes, different species and different coloration. And yet after all of that, he said to himself, vanity of vanity, it is all frustration. Gathering women is frustration. <laughs> For that brother who is wishing he had married three wives before he got born again. Because now that he's born again, he can't marry more than one. He says, I wish I had married three. Then now I can born again. I bring my wives with me. <laughs> vanity of vanity. It's frustration. Solomon had all the wealth. He had anything you can talk about. The queen of Sheba came to Solomon's mansion and the Bible says she collapsed. She fainted. When she saw the elegance, she saw the, 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 the wealth, she saw the, the, the opulence, she saw the, 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 you know, the comfort. She just collapsed. That's a queen. The, a queen of a kingdom. And Solomon stood up and said, vanity of vanity, all these things are vanity. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. That is the whole duty of man. Because true fulfillment in the, is in the discovery of God's plan for your life. Fulfillment is not in the acquisition of stuff. Fulfillment is not in how many cars you have and own. Fulfillment is not in how many houses you are built and how many, how, ma how many women you have. No, no, no. True fulfillment is the discovery of God's plan and purpose for your life. And once you find that, that is the definition of true success. You come to a place where you're fulfilled. You're contented. I may not have a car, but I'm contented. I may not have too much money, but I'm contented. I drink my Gary and Granot, I have peace of mind, and I'm a happy man. But you're eating your chicken, and you're eating your wine, but you are depressed. Because both of us are not on the same wavelength. You are looking for success by men's definition. I am successful by God's definition, which is the fulfillment that I require for my heart. If I'm teaching good this morning, somebody shout, I hear you. Yeah? So fulfillment, therefore, is the proof of God's will. Being fulfilled. That is, fulfilling God's plan is the proof of the will of God. Not success in what you're doing. You can succeed outside of God's purpose and plan. And to God, that success is failure. You can have a good home. You can have a successful marriage with an unbeliever. But that marriage is not godly. Don't always think that unbelievers don't have good marriages. 
You are deceiving yourself. There are unbelievers that are living very happy. Husband and wife, they are living peaceful. They have raised their children. They have money. They are okay. They are comfortable. Husband and wife, they don't even quarrel like Christians quarrel. They are just happy together. And they have lived together for years in that marriage. But they don't know Jesus. They are unbelievers like that. But it's just that when they look at their lives, they are still empty. Because nothing fills up the hunger in the soul of a man other than Christ. So don't always think unbelievers don't have good marriages. You lie. Some of them have better marriages than many Christians. I'm serious. So don't always say, if you marry an unbeliever, you won't have a good marriage. There are unbelievers that their heads are cool-headed. You see an unbelieving girl, you think she understands the fruit of the spirit. Calm. Cooler, like chilled water from the fridge. And there are men whose heads are at home. They are not born again, but their head is at home. So when a man whose head is at home meets a girl that her life is like water from the freezer, their life is good. But there's an emptiness that still remains that only Jesus feels. So fulfillment, therefore, is the definition of success in the will of God. Fulfillment. 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 It's not just about we don't have problem in our marriage. No, that's not success. You can have a marriage that doesn't have problem, but both of you are not fulfilled because you're not in the will of God. Look at Psalm 127 verse 1. Psalms 127. Is anybody enjoying this teaching? Psalm 127 verse 1. <clears throat> Except the Lord build the house, they labor. Is it labor or labor? Okay. Labor, eh? labor. They labor in vain that build it. Watch. They built it. The house was built. It's not that they tried to build, they didn't build. Eh, they built the house, but in vain. Yeah, you went for business. You are now a multi-millionaire, but your life is vain. You are empty. Your bank account is fat and busting, but your heart is empty. <laughs> you have the best of cars. The latest models. But inside the car. is like you are inside a dustbin. Because the ability to enjoy it. Is not there. You can build a house. But not have a home. Yeah you have a beautiful house. But it's not a home. Yeah. Because success is not in the acquisition of materials. It's not. True success is the knowledge of Christ. If any man glory, let him glory that he knows this, that he knows me. He said, the water that I shall give you, if you drink the water of natural success, you will thirst. But when I give you my own water, you will never thirst. That's what we call fulfillment. Somebody shout, I hear you. Yeah. That's what we call fulfillment. Please stay with me. So, except the Lord build a house, they labor, put it up, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchmen wake it, but in vain. That's why some people who are into goal setting, goal setting, Goal setting. I believe in goal setting. Set your goals, but do not measure success by those goals. Don't measure success by the goals you set. Because sometimes you fulfill your goals, and then you know inside your spirit that even though you fulfill your goals, you went out of the will of God to fulfill it. You went out of the will of God to fulfill those goals. Most of the times, you are the only one that will know that this is God's plan. Other people will clap for you and celebrate you that you have succeeded. Inside you, you know that mm -mm, God didn't want me here. I'm in a strange environment. 
How shall we sing the love song in a strange land? By the rivers of there we sat and there we went when we remember them. For the way they carried us away required from us how shall we sing in a string? So there are people singing the Lord's song in a strange land out of the will of God. Out of the plan of God for their lives. Somebody say, ah, how can a man of God be singing Bonnie M in the church? Who told you it's Bonnie M? It's there in the Bible. It's in the book of Psalms. I just have to answer somebody quickly. <laughs> Singing the lost song in a strange land. Out of the will of God. Strange land. Strange environment. In a strange relationship. Singing the lost song in a strange relationship. You know that that relationship is out of the will of God. You know that you cannot be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You are dancing around with an unbeliever and you are singing the Lord's song. <laughs> you are endangering your life. You are endangering your life. 